Steady evaporation from a water table is an important process in the natural environment. For instance, it strongly influences salt accumulation in uh, saline soils as shown here. Now, I want you today to gain some understanding about how the depth of the water table and the soil properties impact the evaporation rate. To do that, we'll need to work through a little bit of calculus, some integration. That can be intimidating for many people. I just want to encourage you to stick with me and you'll see at the end the result we get is uh, quite easy to use and you'll be able to use it to do some practical calculations. Here's a situation that we're considering. We have a soil profile of, uh, shown here on the right hand side and at the depth L we have a water table. There is evaporation occurring from this profile shown here. To understand the uh, flow of water uh, from the water table up to the surface and then the subsequent evaporation we're going to be with the Buckingham Darcy equation. So Q here is the soil water flux, which is equal to negative hydraulic conductivity K, which is a function of psi subscript M, the matrix potential of the soil, multiplied by the hydraulic gradient, which consists of the gradient in the matrix potential, D psi M, D Z, minus 1 for the gradient in gravitational potential. In this case, I've defined Z as being positive downward. Algebraically, we can just rearrange this equation to get D psi M, D Z by itself on the right-hand side. And then we can separate the variables so that we'll be able to perform an integration. When we separate the variables, now we have dz on the left hand side and we have d psi m on the right hand side. And before we can proceed further, we'll have to define the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity function. For this case, we'll be using the Campbell 1974 hydraulic conductivity function. In this function, the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity is equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity, Ks, multiplied by uh, this term, which is the ratio of the air entry potential, psi subscript E, divided by the matrix potential, raised to an exponent 2 plus 3 over B. So we'll just plug this Campbell model into our prior this is the result. Now notice that I've written uppercase N for the exponent. Just remember that N is equal to 2 plus 3 over B, where B is the Campbell exponent. Now we're ready to integrate our equation. The integral on the left hand side is simple. We just integrate from L, the water table depth, up to zero, the soil surface. On the right hand side, we're integrating from the major potential at the water table, which is zero by definition, to x, which is the major potential at the soil surface. Notice that I've replaced negative q with e because e is a positive soil water flux that's upward. Proceeding further, we notice that the integral on the left-hand side evaluates simply to minus L. And on the right-hand side, I've chosen to specify for the upper limit of the integration minus infinity. So the matrix potential at the soil surface has been set to minus infinity. And I've chosen this because this represents the maximum possible evaporation rate in this scenario. 
When we evaluate that integral, we find that the evaporation rate E is equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity multiplied by this term, which is raised to the exponent n. The term in brackets includes the air entry potential in the numerator, and in the denominator, it includes the L, the depth of the water table, n, which is the exponent uh, calculated from the Campbell model, and a sine term. And the sine is, argument of the sine term is pi over n where n again comes from the Campbell function. To use this formula, we'll need to know the soil properties corresponding to the Campbell model. So I've given you here a table which is based on the work of Rawls et al, 1992, and this shows for different soil textures values of the air entry potential, the B exponent, and the saturated hydraulic conductivity. So by selecting a soil texture, in this case we'll start with clay loam, we can read off the values of the parameters that we need for this calculation. So imagine we have now clay loam soil. So here on the right this is now representing a uniform clay loam soil with a water table at one meter depth. From the prior table, we have B is equal to 5.2, the air entry potential is minus 2.5 kilopascals, and the saturated hydraulic conductivity is 0.23 centimeters per hour. We need to do some unit conversions before we proceed with the calculation. So I'm going to convert the air entry potential from minus 2.5 kilopascals over to meters corresponding to the units for our water table depth. To do that, I just need to remember that there are about 10.2 centimeters of water per kilopascal, and of course there are 100 centimeters per meter. I want to convert the saturated hydraulic conductivity from centimeters per hour to millimeters per day, which is a more reasonable unit to use in evaporation calculations. Finally, I need to calculate the exponent n, which is just simply 2 plus 3 divided by 5.2, which evaluates to 2.6. So now I've plugged those coefficients into our equation. As you can see here, 55 millimeters per day is the Ks value. The depth of water table is 1 meter. The N exponent is 2.6. The air entry potential is 0 0.26 meters. Now notice the negative sign in the air entry potential, negative 2.6 meters, has canceled out the negative sign in front of the pi. Plug this into your calculator. I encourage you to start and work these from the inside out. So uh, first start by calculating the argument for the sine function and then proceed outwards from there, and you will find the evaporation rate, maximum steady evaporation rate for clay loam soil with a water table at one meter depth is approximately 3.2 millimeters per day. I'd like you now to work another example by yourself. How much lower would the maximum steady evaporation rate be for a sand if the water table was at one meter depth, given that the B value for a sand is approximately 1.7, the air entry potential is minus 0 0.7 kilopascals, and the saturated hydraulic conductivity is 21 centimeters per hour? Do you think that the evaporation rate will be higher for the sand? since the saturated hydraulic conductivity is several orders of magnitude higher than it was for the clay loam? I encourage you to work through the calculations and find out for yourself. These kind of calculations, although they are approximate and uh, steady, true steady state conditions may be rare, nonetheless this formula gives us a good practical tool to understand how steady evaporation from a water table 
is dependent upon the soil properties and the depth of the water table. If you're interested in learning more about water flow and soil physics in general, I invite you to visit our website at soilphysics.okstate.edu.